Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Uh, this project video, I'm going to explain why I made this to help me make these. So if you want to find out more, carry on watching. So what is this for then? Well, woodworking is certainly not engineering precision. For example, when you turn something between centers and then put it into your chuck, it doesn't always run precisely true as, it, as you'd expect it to. I don't know about you, but whenever I make something, I always try to do it to the best of my ability. And any little thing you can do to help improve it, to me, something like that, is always, always worthwhile having a go at. What has that got to do with pens? I've tried various ways of drilling my pen blanks to put the brass tubes in on the lathe. I mainly do it on the pillar drill now because I've got a better control over it. I always find that not everyone, but every now and then, when I drill through a blank, it comes, it may well come through at an angle. So therefore, for example, the top, you could be dead center, and on the bottom, you could be just a couple of mil off, off the center. Now, when you sand that up on a bench, on a bench sander, or a disc sander on your lathe, you're usually going by one of the edges on your blank. And now this is also providing that you've got a nice square blank like that. And often than not, I might not even have a square blank. The problem it really is, is that the brass tube that's going through there is not precisely parallel to what you're gonna be using as a flat surface for your sanding. Now, if you're using one of the barrel trimmers, yeah, you don't even need to think about that. But the problem I found with the barrel trimmers is that often not you get tear out on the end of your wood. And again, doing it with a, with a disc sander does seem to produce better results. So the idea of this is I've made this so that it's totally parallel, this rod to the base. So that when you put it on your disc sander or some form of a table, that you can put your pen blank on there, hold it down steady, and then at least that end should always be flush with your tube. So if you carry on watching, I'm just gonna do a time lapse of making up a couple of pen blanks uh, for these pens, gluing them together and getting to the point of then where I make this. And I'll talk at the end on how I got on with it. I have a bit of oak here and as you can see it was one that I used for a picture frame and I've just cut it down to, to length and the idea here is to get a spindle which is eight millimeters long or slightly less so the easiest way here is to stick this between centers and turn it down that way. Now I've turned this down, it's nice and even all the way across. And it's just literally under eight mil all the way through. And the idea is to attach this in here somehow with this all being as square as possible so that when I put these on there, I can then bring that lot up to the sanding disc. Next job 
is to make sure I drill a totally square hole in there to put that inside. And I'm not going to fix this onto here and so that I can get these as square as possible. So the first thing you need to do is take your blank down fairly close to the brass tube because uh, it will be a lot quicker and easier. So I'll quickly do that first. So there, right close to the tube now. I don't know whether it shows up on the camera there. It's probably about a millimetre on there. Then you need to make sure that your gauge is set 90 degrees to there make sure this is also 90 degrees and as this should already be parallel with everything there you can place your tube on there let it balance on there bring it up to the gauge and then slowly sand it down That way we have a perfectly square end on there. So reverse that around and do the same that end. And that's it. Well, that wasn't too bad. I will talk about this at the end. I'm just going to turn one of the pens, if not both of them, and I'll put it on a time lapse. And then we'll speak about how, the, how I got on with this. So I've got to say, making this certainly worthwhile. Would I use it all the time? Uh, probably I would give, certainly give it another few more goes because when I compare the pens, now this particular pen is Zylia, if I'm present, pronouncing it right, it's X-Y-L-I-A. I can notice on here on some of these fittings we're not talking much out, we're probably talking a tenth of a millimetre or something like that, that there's a slight gap. And I think that is because when it was sanded down, 
that it was probably, and I'll exaggerate this a bit, that it was sanded a bit of an angle like that. So therefore you get a bit of a gap. Now with these two pens, one is a bit iffy. Um, and I think it's the first one that I've actually just shown in the video. I did both of them one straight after the other, videoed the first one and didn't video the second one. The first one I'm not overly happy with the finish on. And this has got a very, very slight gapping. Um, and that could be from all sorts of reasons. This second one I did is almost perfect. There, especially on the top here, I cannot see a single gap round there whatsoever, which to me says that when I sanded that, it was totally 90 degrees. If that is the case from this and not just luck, then I've got to say that was certainly worthwhile. The pros and cons against this. Well, first of all, this, I've turned that down to literally just under eight millimeters. And the reason I did that was because some of the other pens I've started turning have a brass inner tube diameter of eight millimeters. So that would be a nice snug fit. And that would be perfect for those pen blanks because there's not gonna be much movement in there whatsoever. The cons really, certainly for this pen, is that this top section here is a narrow tube, goes on there, and it wasn't too sloppy. So you're, the idea is you're trying to hold it down in place, making sure it doesn't twist about, and at the same time keeping this up to your mitre and keeping everything still here as you then sand the end off. Now this one, this barrel here, is a lot, lot wider. And... I've got to say that it was a lot, lot harder to try and keep this one straight. It's really a case of just gently pushing in, gentle sanding, um, because if you go too hard, all of a sudden the, the disc will just grab the piece of work and you'll end up probably with a worse case than if you didn't even use this in the first place. So what would I do different? Well, like I say, for this one, I'd use for my other pens all the while, and I'd probably use it for these thinner barrels on here. But for these... If I did, I would just be very, very careful when I used it. However, that's all that scrap wood. What I would do, I would make some more of these up and turn these for the diameter to suit the pens. And then I would work a lot, lot better. The other thing I'd probably do as well is I would probably, and I don't know whether it would work or not, um, I would probably make the base probably maybe a bit wider, but ideally a lot thinner and bring this down further. My sanded disc is, I think, a six inch, 150 mil. So your platform is at the center. So therefore you only have really the three inches on the left-hand side that you're using. And obviously that's going around in a curve. So you are sort of like pushing on the limit of this really near at the top. So if you could get that down lower um, and it would have a lot more balance to hold it in place, and you could probably even clamp it to your mitre as well, so that at least that way you've only got to concentrate on holding your actual blank on there. So I've got to say, a good idea, it does really work well, and I've got to say, it was a quick, quick make. Just a quick update, the pens I've done this week is this one, which I'll just show you there first. As I said, that's Xylia, X-Y-L-I-A, and that's an African wood. The other one which I did in this video, video is Umbilo, U-M-B-I-L-O, and it took a little bit of searching on the internet, and again, it's another African wood. Now, it'd just be interesting to hear from any of you on the comments on this, whether you've done something similar, whether you've had similar issues, maybe you've got a different way of going over it, but hopefully, even if you don't think this is a very good idea, it may well give you some ideas to doing something else. So, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you on the next project video.